Hello. So in the first part of this video, um, you saw me build this uh, frame, this wooden frame with brackets uh, to hold these four Eve cells, 105 amp hours uh, supplied by HakadiBattery.com. So now I want to get this ready for charging. Now I'm going to charge this as a 12 volt battery. So I'm going to join the cells together and charge it at 12 volts and then when it's fully charged oh and during the charging process of course even if this frame can't provide the necessary compression force to hold the battery together at least it will act as an indicator to show me whether or not there's pressure pushing out on these wooden end caps um, once the battery is fully charged to 12 volts i'm then going to discharge each cell separately so that i can get a an amp hour uh, reading for each of the four cells. Um, I've already taken internal resistance measurements. Now I was going to do that on camera but there's very little point because they're all the same. They were all hovering between 0.29 milliohms and 0.30 milliohms. So these are at uh, the supplied state of charge which I think is typically between 30 and 40 percent. I will do a separate set of internal resistance measurements when these are fully charged. Okay so what do I need in order to charge this as a 12 volt battery? Well I need these bus bars so let's just drop those into position on here. So that's uh, now my, oh you can't see them very well, let me just reset the uh, brightness for that. So that's now my uh, 12 volt pack, but I also want the ability to uh, see the voltage of each cell and also balancing so that I know that the four cells are being kept at uh, the same voltage. So I've put uh, these, this is the five amp uh, active balancer with the transformer feedback balancing method, whatever it's called. Um, and the little display that shows you the four cell voltages, I've put these on a piece of wood and that just mounts uh, on there. So I'm gonna screw that on now and connect up the uh, five way cable. So this cable that was supplied with the active balancer, I fitted uh, six millimeter uh, ring terminals to the end of it. So I'm just gonna plug this in and then get all the ring terminals uh, attached to this battery so that we can start seeing the cell voltages. Okay, I put the first two wires on, black and green, across the first cell. Uh, so let's just see what happens if I switch this on and nothing happens so it uh, won't power up just with one cell worth of voltage okay let's do the next wire which is this yellow one uh, okay let's try powering it up again and uh, yes it does power up i'll just get in close on that display and you can see that we've got uh two cells showing up cell one and cell two uh, about 3.2. Ah, oh, that's interesting. We've got an interesting uh, big anomaly in the voltage there. I'm not sure that's strictly true. So maybe this gives strange results if only two cells are connected uh, because I think all the cells are at 3.28 volts. But anyway, 6.49. Let's put another wire on. Switch that off and put the next wire on, which is this white one. Okay, that's three cells connected. Let's see what we get now. Uh, so you can see that the uh, voltage reading was wrong previously. 3.29 effectively, 3.29. This one's now reading oddly low. Let's get the fourth uh, cell connected. Okay, so that's all four cells connected and now they're all reading 3.29 within two millivolts. Uh, and the green light down here is flashing. Uh, this is actually a dual color LED. There's yellow in there as well. Uh, as far as I can tell from the manual, yellow uh, means either under temperature or over temperature. Uh, green flashing means you are balanced, but it does appear to me that it actually continues working to balance them even finer, even when this is flashing. That's what it appears to do. Uh, when it's on solid, then it's balancing, presumably with a larger current. 
incidentally, if you're wondering what this balancer is, it is the BT04S. 05b and i did do a video of me playing around with this thing uh, i could put a card up there uh, so you can go and take a look at that and there'll be a link to this on aliexpress now the only other thing i need um, are some fairly high current uh, cables to do the charging and the discharging i'm probably going to limit uh, the charging and discharging to about 10 amps because that's the equipment that I've got. Um, so I will connect these. That's most positive and most negative is back here. Uh, get these connected so that I can connect my charger. Right, that's it, that's ready. Um, so now I can start charging uh, this pack in my uh, pos and neg connectors. I've used sockets here so that uh, they don't accidentally touch something. Um, I've got uh, four voltages, which I can keep an eye on when this starts together i'll probably charge it to about 3.5 volts initially it's the next day i have charged to 3.5 volts per cell so that's 14 volts uh, for the whole pack it's uh so this is limited to 14 volts or just a fraction above um it's holding current is 2.3 amps at the moment and it's gradually falling uh so the cells are 3.51 uh, this one's 3.488, so uh, 3.511. This one's 3.488. So there's a little bit of balancing needing to be done. Um, this is just sort of stopping at uh, 3.5 volts just to sort of get some absorption in these cells and also to allow the balancer to catch up and uh, balance all the four cells before I push on up to 14.6 volts, which will be 3.65 volts per cell you can just see right at the bottom there the green light is on solid so the balancer recognizes that the cell voltages are a little way apart and it is actively balancing although even though when that's flashing it does still appear to be actively balancing in terms of uh, cell pack expansion the pencil line that i drew there uh, appears to be in exactly the same position so it doesn't look like the cells are pushing these brackets uh, outwards because of any pressure there's no noticeable uh, cell expansion at all and i think if there were any uh, cell pressure pushing these two pieces of wood outwards you'd see it in this metalwork you'd see it bowing and it just isn't so um, it doesn't look like there's any force from these cells outwards at all really okay it's another day and uh, i've now uh, reconfigured this for discharging these four cells which i'm going to do individually on a per cell basis uh, so i've set up my electronic dc load down here um, the high current wires go to the cell and those go into the current inputs on the uh, discharger and I've uh, got four wires uh, for this so that I can get accurate voltage measurements of the cell. Now you require that for doing watt hour measurements. You don't really require it for doing amp hour measurements because amps are the same everywhere in the circuit. Um, but what I really wanted to do here was uh, be able to accurately measure the cell voltage so that I can just pre-charge these cells because I've saturated these or absorbed them at 3.5 volts. And then just prior to the discharge, I'm just raising uh, the voltages of, uh, well, this cell is the one I'm testing at the moment, up to 3.65 volts using this little power supply. That goes into the charge input on the electronic DC load because this... Um, uh, DC load you can also uh, get it to pre-charge the cell prior to doing the discharge but anyway let's get down a closer look on this and the display and see what's going on right so this is doing a constant current uh, discharge of the cell it's going to stop at 2.5 volts it also stops if it's over 3.7, which it won't be uh, 300 watts. It's never going to get to that because I'm running this at 10 amps and it's 3.3 volts currently. So that's about 33 watts. Uh, battery six, I, I, I'm going to draw these curves for all four cells, although they probably all look the same. Uh, so I'll do batteries six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, currently I've got 7.6, I think that says. 
uh, amp hours out of this cell. Now it's a 105 amp hour cell. So at 10 amps, of course, this is going to take, well, I'm hoping to get a bit more than 105 amp hours. So it's probably going to take about 11 hours per cell. And I can do 11 hours in a day. Uh, so it's actually going to take four days to discharge and characterize these four cells. Uh, right, these fans have come on. I don't know whether you can hear that. Uh, they come on when these heat sinks get to 40 degrees and turn off again when the heat sinks get, heat sinks get to 30 degrees. Um, so we're just losing the power basically in these heat sinks and these fans. I can feel warm air being blown out from that heat sink. So as I say, I saturated the cell um, at 3.5 volts and then with that little power supply off to the left there, I lifted it up to uh, 3.65 volts. Now the amount of energy required to do that was tiny. I mean, it was an amp for a few minutes. So there's really very little energy between the cell saturated at 3.5 volts and the cell uh, raised to 3.65 volts. I'm not going to saturate the cells at 3.65 volts because I actually can't because the current uh, being fed into the cell is so tiny. I'm below the minimum current uh, recommendation for that. So I'm just taking it up to 3.65 volts and then doing this constant current discharge all the way down to 2.5 volts. 3.29, it's been sat on that for quite a while. And we're now at uh, eight amp hours. Now, if you remember, I did internal resistance measurements on all four of these cells and they were all near identical, uh, somewhere between 0.29 and 0.3 milliohms. I just repeated those internal resistance tests once I'd got all these cells up to 3.5 volts saturated and the measure measurements were exactly the same. So decent cells uh, don't change their internal resistance measurements uh, depending upon whether they're at a low state of charge or a high state of charge. So I will come back uh, once I've got a, a finished amp hour reading for the first of the four cells and then I'll probably come back again when I've got amp hour and watt hour readings for all of the four cells. Okay, the results are in for the first uh, cell that I discharged. That's the one on the right there. Let's get in a bit closer on that display. So discharging the cell uh, from 3.65 volts down to 2.5 volts. That's the cutoff voltage. Uh, this cell did 112 amp hours. Now it's a 105 amp hour cell, so that's uh, 7 amp hours, so that's at least 5% uh, increase on the nominal capacity. Uh, interestingly, 362.2 watt hours, I'll do a division of those two numbers to see what the nominal voltage is. So you can see that this discharge took 11.2 uh, hours, uh, so these do take quite a long time. I'm going to uh, start discharging the second cell now and then I might actually publish the video after two cells uh, and then just do the follow-up remaining two cells uh, as information in the description. So let's get this cell disconnected. I'll move the connections to the next cell along, remembering of course that my pos and negs are the other way around, and start discharging uh, the second cell. So I've just uh, set the next cell going. That's clocked up uh, an amp hour now. But I just wanted to look at the results for the first cell, which were 112 amp hours and 362.2 watt hours. Now, both of these are uh, accumulated as the um, discharger goes along. So as the voltage changes, it's adding in uh, watt hours. And that gives us a nominal voltage of 3.23 volts, um, which is interesting because that's very close to the nominal quoted for lithium ion phosphate of 3.2. Because I was watching this uh, first cell discharge yesterday and in exactly the same way as this one is, uh, it spent a lot of its time on this 3.29 volts. Now that's at a uh, discharge current of 10 amps. And I thought, well, that's a bit higher than 3.2 volts nominal. So if it spends most of its time at 3.29, we're going to get a much higher 
uh, nominal voltage than the standard 3.2 volts. But then, of course, as it got to the end of the discharge cycle, which was admittedly uh, 11 hours in total, uh, it did start to drop down. And so adding everything up, or area under the curve, I suppose it is, uh, you get to this, my phone's just gone off, 3.23 uh, uh, volts nominal. Right, another day, um, another 11 hour discharge. And uh, this one did 111.1 amp hours, 359.3 watt hours. Once again, if you divide those, you get 3.23 volts. So I'm going to carry on now and do the remaining two cells. I'm working right to left, uh, these two. But I want to get this video out now, so uh, I'm going to... Uh, stop uh, videoing here and I'll just put the results for these two cells in the description below the video. So that was uh, discharge tests for these uh, Hakadi battery 105 amp hour EVE uh, cells, lithium ion phosphate. Um, I'll put um, the results, as I say, in the description below. I'll also put um, links to uh, where you can get these from HakadiBattery.com website. Now, another thing that uh, Hakadi sent me uh, is this JK BMS. Um, this is the JK B1A8S-20P. Uh, so I will do another video where I put this next to these four cells, hook it all up and we'll have a look at how this thing works. Uh, it does have a, I believe, a 2 amp active balancer in it, so that could be quite interesting. But that will be in a future video. Um, just let's have a reminder shot of what these cells look like. So these are lithium ion cells, uh, specifically lithium ion phosphate. Uh, LifePo4, so LFP105, they're 105 amp hours. Uh, but that's it for this video. Um, good results from these 10%, uh, sorry, 5% uh, on top of the rated 105 amp hours fairly consistently. Um, as I say, that's it for this video. So cheerio.